another thing that's often forgotten <clears throat> as we run through this, and I'm sure it's not by you, you have all the experience and training necessary in this, is communications. You know, we, we look at a lot of product up here, and it's just sort of, you know, you, where do you get it? We get it online. And where do you get it online? If I had my w weapon in my pocket, I'd pull it out, you know, we sort of take it for granted. How are we going to get this stuff? And there have been any, any number of issues over the years where uh, that's uh, proven to be a, a, a problematic assumption. And, the, um, and even when you do know that you need a satellite communicator, the, uh, uh, you often spend a lot of time talking to providers of satellite communication facilities to setting that up. Point is, don't take communications for granted at all. The next speaker, Jeff Tomasson from Oceans. Oceans is a service that, for many of us, really uh, allowed us to get full use out of our satellite systems, because all too often we're using a sat phone with limited bandwidth, uh, download capacity, and compression really saves the day. If you can compress the data very often for some things, you can get that information into the nav shack before the satellite gets over the horizon. And believe me, as the satellite passes over the horizon and your $2 a minute or whatever <laughs> it is communication link drops out, the air goes blue in the nav shack. So it's a very important uh, consideration, and Jeff will be talking to us about it. That's the go button. All right. And that's the thing. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. Thank you. So I understand there's been a lot of numbers thrown at you today and a lot of stuff coming at you really quick. And I'm going to be not an exception to that. <laughs> so um, we are here local in Seattle. Our office is down in Des Moines. And I'd be more than happy to talk with anyone uh, you know, down the road about your communication needs or questions you might have regarding this brief presentation or you know, looking to outfit your own vessel for, um, for communications in the future. But the idea is we want to be able to get all this great weather information onto the boat while we're out at sea. We also maybe want to stay in touch with people back home. Uh, what I'm going to do is cover the four primary satellite networks, give you an idea of what's different between them uh, operationally, cost-wise, that kind of thing. We're going to start with the, they really break down into kind of two, two packages. You have geostationary satellites, which are like your direct TV that you have at home where you've got a dish on the outside and you point it to this one spot in the sky and that's where the satellite lives. Now imagine you're on a boat moving around. You're up here at the poles. Your look angle to that satellite is looking south. If you have a big mountain in the way, you may not see that satellite. Other systems like Iridium and Global Star, you go outside and you stand here, and these are low Earth orbit satellites, so they're moving around all the time. So it doesn't matter where you are, that satellite's gonna fly overhead. It takes about 10 minutes, roughly, from horizon to horizon, depending on the exact um, satellite that's flying by, where it is exactly in the sky. So you just need to be outside and wait for that satellite to come into view. Um, as we talk about these, we'll see the differences, uh, some of the key components between the, the two styles here. I say styles, there's probably a better word for it. Uh, we're gonna look at KVH first, and you've probably seen these on a lot of boats. Um, seen a lot of these kind of domes. Most of them are TV. So most people are wanting to put t television on their boat. They're looking at a geostationary satellite, so you've got a dome like this that is constantly aiming this, that dish that you normally have on the side of your house, but it's aiming it at the satellite so you can receive that TV signal. Uh, VSAT supports high-speed data communications as well, slightly different uh, satellite, different transponders. Uh, KVH happens to lease transponder space on a lot of different satellites that are up there, so if you look at the coverage map, uh, you see on, on almost global coverage, but definitely across the populated areas. So at any given point along the equator, they have a couple, you know, they've leased space on a number of satellites so that you will have connectivity in those areas. Uh, these, 
One thing to keep in mind with VSAT is like home, if you've got real stormy conditions, a lot of rain happening, uh, due to the frequency that these operate, that rain will degrade your connection. So you may lose connectivity. And you'll notice if you're shopping for a VSAT, a lot of times they will sell you a backup system of an iridium sort uh, to fill in the areas where your VSAT's down for either weather or, or other reasons. They do give high speed uh, data on the KVH. The V3 is their smallest dome, so this is the one you're gonna see around most of the time. Uh, five megabits down, two megabits up, so it's not quite what you have at home, but it's, you know, can be similar. Uh, hardware, you're looking at, you know, $18,000 is the list. You typically can get this for about $15,000. Uh, airtime plans, starting at $100 a month. And then uh, you're really looking at about a dollar per megabyte. So I'm gonna throw these numbers, these megabytes and kilobytes and stuff at you, so just bear with me. And the takeaway is when you're on the boat and you're doing data, you need to look at exactly what data you're transferring across these networks. Here we're paying a dollar a megabyte. You know, that might sound expensive. This is actually one of the cheapest systems out there per megabyte, one of the more expensive systems for the hardware. So there'll, there'll be a, a slight change as we go through the products, uh, how that cost relationship goes. The next of the geostationary satellites would be MRSAT in the popular category. As you can see, they typically operate off of a three satellite constellation. You have one for each ocean region. And uh, as you can see on their coverage map, these are each lobe you know, from the three satellites. But notice, you know, we don't have any polar coverage. We do have more coverage than we had on the KVH system. That's because they're they can use that one satellite and it's going everywhere, whereas KVH and the products that they're, the, the channels they're leasing off the other satellites are very focused beams, whereas NMARSAT's gonna be a more general focus. Typical hardware here, the Fleet One is probably NMARSAT's most popular product right now. You've got a dome, it's about 11 inches in diameter, uh, weighs about 10 pounds. You have a blow dex unit, the block black box there. It's about the size of your laptop computer. And you'd have a single coax going between that antenna and this box down below. The box you're gonna treat kind of like your home router. You're just gonna plug into it via an ethernet connection and then you're off and running. Uh, MRSAT has their airtime right now on the Fleet Ones kind of broken up into global and coastal. So most of us, I'm gonna ask a quick question, who's a blue water, who's blue water cruising? And then we have coastal, most everybody's coastal cruising and some racing, I'm assuming. Um, most of the people fall into this coastal area. Uh, anywhere in that coverage area, you get a much better airtime rate. Uh, you know, you're 60 bucks a month, $7 a megabyte for your usage. Uh, we have, for example, that's 60, dollar a month plan includes your first 10 megabytes. Uh, using the right software services to manage your data flow, uh, we have commercial vessels that are running the entire month off of that $60 plan. They're never going over 10 megabytes. But if you're on your boat and you plug in to that modem directly and let Windows just run wild, you're probably gonna burn about $3,500 in your first couple days. Uh, of airtime, and we've had that that kind of stuff happen when the boatyards set up your equipment. They don't know to set up the other software and, and safeguards, firewalls and such. They turn it on to see if it's working. Worked great, and they turn it back off. Well, in that short amount of time, at you know even a 150 kilobit data connection, Windows saw that you were online, updated Windows at 300 megabytes, and, and away we go. So there's things like that, and we'll, we'll touch base on that a little bit. But if you're operating in the green area, you know, it's great. You can get these, these cheaper airtime plans. If you're going to Hawaii or something along those lines, maybe you're going to po the French Polynesia, you're gonna be looking at a global plan, which is a little more expensive uh, to get coverage out there. They do have unlimited data plans available. They're $190 a month that will give you unlimited data. The issue there is 
and MRSAT will throttle your speeds uh, pretty quickly as you start to use it. So you'll start out at the full 150 kilobit data speed and within about 50 megabytes, you could be down to about 16 kilobyte data speed or kilobit data speeds. So they'll, they'll bring that down. Um, you know, we'll look at your data files, your emails, your weather stuff that you're downloading. Most of the time you'll find just on the, the standard plans, you don't need an unlimited data plan to get that kind of, that kind of stuff. Uh, cost for the terminals, about $3,000 right now. For that, it's the whole hardware kit and caboodle, and they are month-to-month -month airtime plans, so you could sign up just for the summer season and turn it off without any, any issues. Global Star. I'm sure a lot of you have heard about Global Star. They were very popular for a while there, and a lot of people bought them. A lot of people dropped them recently, and I'll explain that a little bit. So Global Star is the first of our low Earth orbit satellites. Uh, they are orbiting, uh, you can kind of see on the, the map here, they reach to about 65 degrees north and south. Um, it works as a flashlight, so you can kind of see the circular areas that those satellites can see as they're flying by. Uh, you do not have polar coverage on these because uh, you know, they're basically the maximum of their orbits blocks off and then you can see you know your flashlight coverage isn't going to get there. We're operating off of about 24 brand new satellites. They say brand new but they went up um, around 2011, 2010. Um, their original constellation was 48 satellites in the early 2000s. They had a component failure on those satellites that the rate the particular component couldn't handle the solar radiation. And it failed, and they had a huge degradation in their network. And a lot of people got really upset because all of a sudden, you weren't making calls, you, you weren't able to do anything with this satellite phone system you bought. So they got on board, they launched a bunch of these new satellites up. Well, when your original constellation took 48 satellites and now you're down to 24, you can imagine that things are stretched out a little bit. So what you see now is that the constellation is actually spread out so that they could give you as much coverage as they could, but you end up with these little gaps every so often in times. So depending on where you are in the world, you're gonna, you could have connectivity and it could drop and you could wait minutes for it to come in again. And there's two reasons for that. One is Global Star is what they built on what they call a bent pipe type of architecture. The call goes from your satellite phone to the satellite, and then that satellite has to see a ground station to relay that call down to immediately. So if that satellite can only see you, like you're out here, the satellite might see you, but the ground station's up here in the middle of this dark orange, and you know it can't complete that call. So you'll see this is the actual coverage map that you'll get in the center of the dark orange, again, being the, the ground station. So if I'm close to that ground station, my call is gonna you know, go through without any problem. As I start to get to the outside, what happens is the opportunity for a gap, you know, I'm gonna be waiting for a satellite to come or move far enough overhead to where he can see me and the ground at the same time. So unlike Global Star, it's not really global coverage. Uh, Global Star is the same system that the Spot little communicator uses for tracking and such. Uh, difference being that is sending a one-way data transmission, so it's waiting for a satellite to come in. It then sends that packet up to the satellite, and and then that goes down and transfers. But the data, it's not a continuous conversation happening between the units, so you effectively get a larger coverage area. A little bit of smoke and mirrors there. Um, because of the buffering and, and just the one-way data. Hardware for Global Star consists of uh, handheld phones. You can do docking stations with those. Uh, remote antennas that you might have mounted on the arch or railing or you know something like that. You're looking around a dollar a minute for airtime. Um, right now, they don't have any new phones to sell you, so you can only get used phones. 
Um, they'll give it to you if you buy an annual plan. The docking kits are no longer available. I don't know if they will ever come out with those again. Um, so it's really hard to promote Global Star. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> We were, we've been a dealer of, them, of theirs for a very long time and actually uh, really pushed them into the doing data over the terminal because we had some early software that was designed specifically for it. Uh, it was great, but the business model down there has definitely changed. You know, we're not really sure what's going on. Uh, Global Star struggled financially for a long time. Uh, they continued to struggle. And, uh, you know, that's where we are. The popular items that they're pushing right now outside of the spot product, uh, they kind of market that separately, is their, their Sapphi 2. And you'll see this at boat shows and in magazines and things like that. And this is, quote, their high speed system. It's a small brick. Or you can do the uh, remote antenna system, which is a little bit bigger box, but it connects to an external antenna. Uh, it's the theory, it's a nice unit. Uh, you know, it's just a little box you put outside, you connect to it through a, an app on your smartphone and have the app running and it's a, a Wi-Fi connection. Your computer can connect to it via Wi-Fi for data transmissions and such. Um, you're still looking at a, a dollar per minute for voice, but what they do is they give you more data. You can get a five megabyte data plan um, it, notice the speeds now are quite a bit higher. Uh, this is off of their second generation satellites. And then when you're in areas where the ground stations have also been upgraded, you can get this much faster data speed. So it's fine for coastal, in theory, good for coastal, east coast, west coast kind of thing. Outside of those areas, you know, you're not able to see these ground stations, so you're not going to get any connectivity. But with only 24 satellites, what happens is you might be connected, you know, start to load up a web page, and because they are, they're going to claim you have fast enough speeds to load up a web page or do your regular email and stuff like that. By the time you get, get it connected, you just start to do something, and boom, it drops on the call. And now you got to wait a minute or so for the next satellite to come into view. And that's going to vary depending on where you are in the coverage area. In the fourth network, Iridium is definitely uh, the most popular, the most um, robust at the moment um, in terms of low Earth orbit and most popular across the range because of the cost of equipment and usage and such. They're a little bit different in their orbiting patterns. They're a north to south orbit, a polar orbit. So they actually have 100% global coverage, even at the poles. So anybody going to the poles, the scientific stations, expeditions, all that kind of stuff, they're all running Iridium systems um, for just that reason. You've got 66 brand new satellites that are just completed launching last year to build the, the entire network is all brand new satellites. Um, they are working exceptional. This particular shot, I kind of wanted to point out what was happening at the end of their last bunch of, of satellites is you were getting little gaps every once in a while were starting to appear where they had some defunct satellites in their network. Now, with them all brand new, it's, it's basically a solid yellow screen when you look at their, their patterns. The other difference with Iridium is the call is transferred between satellites. So it doesn't matter where you are on the planet, when you make a call, it goes to a satellite. And if that satellite's not near a ground station, the call's transferred across satellites till it reaches the one that's in communication with the ground station. So most of our traffic is all gonna land and go through Arizona. Uh, if you're out in the Pacific, it could end up in Hawaii, but most of that is dedicated for the DOD. Um, there are other ground stations now in Europe and such to build their capacity. But you know, rest assured, no matter where you are, you're going to be able to make a call. If you are cruising inside around here, you know, if you're going up into Canada, up into southeast Alaska, with a geostationary satellite like KVH or Inmarsat, where you have to be able to see the satellite, 
If, there, if you're in a fjord and there's a mountain in the way, you have to move in order to find yourself in a position where you're going to be able to see that satellite. With Iridium, you can just sit in that spot, and if you don't see the satellite right now, wait a minute or so, and a satellite's going to fly overhead, and you'll have some, connect, you know, a period of connectivity, and that's going to vary depending on, you know, how deep, how much you, you know, window you have, um, where the satellites are in the sky as they're passing at that particular moment. But you're always going to be able to get something out, whether it's you know, just a text message, a very short voice call, or you're going to, you know, download some of your weather information and such. Iridium's terminals uh, look like they have a high-speed terminal, the, a newer one from their CERTUS network, and about $8,000. Uh, these are real popular with the fishing boats, uh, popular with the research vessels now because we have data speeds. Um, that are much higher than Iridium ever had before, and closer to the VSAT terminals. And a lot of times when you buy a VSAT terminal, they'll sell you this as a backup system. So you get close, you know, you get data speeds that are relevant um, to what you had on VSAT, but over the Iridium network. And the way they, they do this higher speed is actually inside that dome are just these flat panels. So it's communicating with multiple satellites in the sky as they're flying overhead. So it's always going to be connected to more than one satellite um, about 80 to 90 percent of the time. So you're talking to two or three satellites at once to help give you that data speed. The other really popular Iridium item, and I'm sure everybody has seen this around uh, in the boating community, but the Iridium Go is a very popular little unit. If you haven't seen one, it's just a little box about so big. And you pull it outside, you flip up the antenna, and it's going to turn on and connect to the satellite. And from there, you run an app on your smartphone, and you open that app, and you can then use it to make a phone call, to send a text message, um, or to send a position report in. And then if you have compatible software on your, you know, device, whether it's an iPhone or a computer uh, or Android phones, tablets, you know, those kinds of things, you can use it for making data calls and such. We go back to this, though, we're, we're down here really slow. You know, figure dial-up speed was 56. We're down at 2.4 kilobits per second. So it's much slower and becomes really important that you're using software applications that are designed specifically to work with that. Uh, the handheld phones, uh, great options. They can be used for voice. They can also be used for data. Um, you run a little bit more for a handheld phone. You know, $1,300 is the popular uh, Iridium Extreme handheld phone. They can be put into docking stations with external antennas. This is a very popular setup for a lot of people because you have the convenience of a docking station, maybe mounted down at your, your nav station, external antenna. You're always connected. You're, you know, you're always there ready to receive a call or make a call. Or when you're on your computer and you're downloading your weather and email, um, you don't have to be outside in the rain or getting splashed. And then should something happen, the EPIRB goes off, the life raft goes off, you grab that satellite phone and take it with you, and now you can make a phone call from the life raft as well, which is really important. Um, so a lot of some of the earlier race, uh, as technology changes and the race committees become younger <laughs> and embrace the newer technology, uh, what's happened is they've, you know, used to be you always had to have a single sideband, and that is important. You know, never discount a sideband for your voice communications and such. But as, you know, we get into people who are used to being online, have a different um, understanding of the Internet, being able to just get online, download my email, my weather whenever I want, being able to have a satellite phone where I just pop it off, out of the thing, take it with me. You know, that kind of stuff becomes important. So you'll see more and more of the races. You know, it's now mandatory you have a satellite phone. Some of them will tell you you have to have a handheld phone for that safety issue. Whereas the Go, you saw, 
you had to have your smartphone with you. So now imagine taking this in the life raft. You gotta grab the Go, which you can do. Grab the Go, grab your iPhone, make sure they're both charged, and then turn the Go on, turn your smartphone on, make a call. Whereas with the handheld phone, you can just take it, one piece kind of thing. So that, that's, you know, if you're doing any events, you know, pay attention to the, the wording on their requirements. Um, usually an external antenna is always required in any kind of uh, rally or, or race. Uh, looking at satellite phones, looking at all your weather information that you want to get, um, how do you put it all together? So you choose a phone, make sure you've got the right accessories to go with it, the external antenna, the cabling, the docking station, power adapters, that kind of stuff. So that they're all part of the package, but they all need to be put together. So whoever you're talking to, you know, needs to be aware that there are other pieces that you're going to need with the basic unit. Um, a router or firewall type of device is really important to keep your data usage in check and also make something like that 2.4 kilobit connection useful. So that's really slow. Imagine you know, trying to download some weather files over 2.4 when you're looking at a NOAA weather chart that might be 60, you know, 50, 60 kilobytes. That's going to take a while to download. Software applications or you know specific services uh, like we mentioned, sail docks, um, oceans provide services as well, where they compress the, that data down and can bring those files you know to about half that size or even smaller. So things like that are important. Uh, email services you want to use dedicated email services that are again designed to compress everything and work with that satellite phone both in in dialing. Um, you won't be able to check your standard email in most cases over the satellite phones unless you have the higher bandwidth ones. Because of the authentication that happens these days, uh, the authentication itself will kill your connection with how much data is going back and forth and waiting that happens. And you'll realize you just spent three minutes while it was just trying to log in. Uh, so if you use dedicated services that are designed around that, they implement some slightly different protocols to help uh, speed things up. Um, Weather, you know, make sure you're using a weather application that's designed for that as well. And surfing the web over these, as you can imagine, could be pretty expensive. It got more expensive uh, more recently as uh, the web sort of embraced this constant HTTPS type stuff. So now web pages don't compress very well. And if they do, it's because somebody's downloading that web page manipulating that web page and then rebroadcasting it out to you. So it gets a little more complicated. Um, just to run quick through some examples, and I'm, these are biased to our products, um, but we have a little, one of our routers type of things called a Sidekick. Um, little box, easy enough, plugs into your handheld phone, whether it's by itself or in a docking station makes it so you can connect pretty much any type of device to your satellite phone and use it for data. Um, and it's also gonna do some blocking of uh, unwanted data. But the primary thing with it in this application is software. Uh, Windows, Mac, things like that, you know, your tablet and stuff, does not have the old dial-up configurations, you know, anymore. They're trying to get away from that. You know, they do, it can be very complicated to set up and most people don't want to do that. So a little box like this will make it so it's just a Wi-Fi connection to that satellite phone. And it will take care of the dialing for you. Uh, Sidekick is also has a firewall built into it so that when you are online downloading stuff, and this is with any firewall, whether you're using a uh, you know, something from a, another vendor or, you know, something KVH might set up for you as part of their service plan. But the firewalls are very important to block. When you go online, you don't want that Windows update happening over your satellite network. You don't want little mini software updates or even just these little pings that go out and say, hey, am I on the internet? You know, you don't want to be paying for that at, you know, a few dollars a megabyte and such. So a little device like this uh, comes in pretty handy. A typical Iridium package uh, might look like this, a phone, a docking station, external antenna, and of course the little router. 
So you're looking at just under $2,000 know, as a hardware package for you. Uh, you can do something like an Iridium Go. Uh, they have you know, plans as low as uh, get the unit for free if you sign up for a whole year of airtime. There's a, a number of variations on that. Uh, but to give you an idea, you know, the unit by itself is gonna run you about $700 for a, a, a straight Go. And then you can do unlimited airtime plans for you know, under $150 a month. And those can be month to month plans. We do rent phones. Um, you can rent a handheld phone or a go if it's something you just need for a passage. You know, maybe you're making a run to Hawaii and you just need it for the month. Um, you can do that. Or if you're just, you know, spending some time doing a Vancouver Island loop. Um, you know, just rent it for the month, try it out before you decide you really need to have one full time. Um, products that we offer, we do, do email services, um, messaging services, web compression, and a variety of weather applications uh, for getting weather information down over those satellite phones and then applications for something like your iPad to, to download and view your grid weather information on. So I know that's a lot of information right up front uh, just to help scramble what wasn't scrambled already. But if we can answer any questions, I did leave some brochures here for you to pick up. Um, we are here local and happy to answer any more detailed questions for you down the road. Thank you. Okay.